directly north into Idaho. We just kind of set out to try to go around it. I think we made it maybe a mile. Yeah. Couldn't get out. I was in utter shock. It was nothing as far as you could see, just snow. We were in the middle of nowhere, and nobody knew where we were. I think we both realized that no one's going to come out here. This might be the end of this happy little family we had. What did we do? Oh, my God. What did we do, Jim? Christmas time, 1992, my grandma passed away, quickly made arrangements to borrow a pickup truck from a fellow soldier. A little car that we had probably wasn't up to the, the long drive up. And we left first thing in the morning, too, and thought, well, OK, well, if we leave first thing in the morning, we'll get there, you know, by the evening time. Wouldn't he look so cute in a snowsuit? Cute in a snowsuit. Yeah, I guess so. You're so serious. We're going to a funeral. It's not exactly a road trip. She'll be okay. I love you. Jim and I met in high school, and Jim to me was just sweet. We were married about 11 days before I actually went off to boot camp. She had already enlisted and was uh, in the Army Reserves. We were both 19, I believe. He's only just like a few months older than me. Jim and Jennifer got married about a year and a half before Clayton was born. They called to let me know that, that she was pregnant. I was pretty excited. My first grandchild. The original plan was to take Interstate 80 over the mountain passes directly north into Idaho. It wasn't snowing. It was sunny. It was nice out. I mean, it was nice up until the point where we got stopped. Excuse me. What's going on? They're closing the pass. How come? Snowstorm's not letting up. You better find yourself somewhere to stay tonight. We don't know when it's going to open, but it won't be before morning. Awesome. OK. We will just reroute. We decided to find a different way over the mountains. We decided to go north. The map we had showed this road, Nevada 8A, I think it was called. We figured, oh, it's on a map. It's drivable. We can drive it. It turns out that the road closed sign was buried in snow. We were in the middle of nowhere, and, and nobody knew where we were. For a long time, we were following the taillights of some other vehicle. So we figured, well, we, we must be on some road that's decently traveled. And then all of a sudden we didn't see them anymore. So now we were alone. He's out. The car's gone. Are we 
still in 8A? I haven't turned. Where do you think we are? Did you read that? Read what? We drove quickly past a sign that neither of us, Jennifer and I, neither of us had a, a good chance to read what was on the sign. We backed up to go see the sign. Twenty miles. Yeah, that's not that bad. Oh my gosh. Jim, this snow's really deep. We didn't know we were driving in, you know, a foot or more of snow. We thought we were driving in a couple inches. I think we made it maybe a mile and then just got bogged down in the in the snow and couldn't get out. Oh, I can get it. Jim, you're tired. I'm tired. Okay, let's just take a break. It was late, it was dark. Leave the lights on in case somebody drives by. Um, and then we'll we'll just see what it looks like in the morning. It was not pretty in the morning. <laughs> Jim. Jim. I was in utter shock. I couldn't believe how where we were. It was nothing. It was just nothing. As far as you could see, just snow. Jim, wake up. Looking out the windows, we see oh, no, no, no tire tracks. We're still alone here. I think we're gonna have to turn it around, just dig it out, find our old tracks, and follow them. Okay. We did get the truck turned around and tried a number of times but still could not, could not hit the truck much more than a, a couple dozen feet, maybe. The funeral was going to be on the 31st. Jim and Jennifer and Clayton, they were supposed to be there like on the 29th, I think, and they didn't show up. And we waited all night just looking out the window and calling to make sure they left and you know there just was nothing we moved to the back of the truck because there was a little more space in there and so we can have clay like just move around and get out of his car seat didn't have a lot of food for him because he was still breastfeeding. We had what was left of a fruitcake from the holidays. We had just the crumbs at the bottom of a Dorito bag. And 
stock we had, prenatal vitamins. Okay. Are these? That's something, right? And I think that was pretty much it. We stayed in the truck for three days. But, I mean, we just, we, you know, we'd play hangman or tic-tac-toe or other kind of word games. And that's pretty much how we passed the time. The wind was really, it just was crazy. It was just so windy. Do you think he's warm enough? You want to turn the heat on a little bit? Yeah. We turned the heater on when it got really super cold, but we tried to save the gas because we weren't sure how long we would be there or or if we'd need it to drive out. We were seemingly in the middle of nowhere and, and nobody knew where we were. We really started to think that this might, this might be the end of this happy little family we had. I think we both realized that like, no one's gonna come out here. We made the decision to, to walk out. What about this? No. The only way to get out the truck won't move. Nobody's coming. We'll we'll have to go out on foot. We didn't come prepared to walk in snow. We came prepared to go to a funeral. So we knew that we had to keep our feet dry. I mean, we knew that just even just from military training. You got to keep your feet dry. We covered our heads with sweatshirts, tied them awkwardly around our heads to try to keep our heads warm. Does mommy look silly? You think I'm funny, don't you, Clayton? Clayton. Well, we decided to bundle him up in his little baby clothes, and we had a little tiny baby sleeping bag for him that we nestled him in. It's okay. We weren't sure that we would all survive, so we penned a little letter basically letting our family know what our final wishes were. And if we don't make it? If we don't make it, they should keep us together. Like, bury us together? Yeah. We were going to live or we were going to die. The decisions we made would determine if we were going to live or die. Okay, hand me Clay. You want to pull him like a sled? No. We can't put him in that bag. Are you serious? Yeah. Honey, he's too small and vulnerable. If we, if we expose him to the elements, now if we trip and fall, he won't survive. Okay, so we can bundle him up. Okay. Just like this. Put him in the bag. All right, little boy? Get ventilated. You have to tie this on the hanger here. Jim was like, oh. I'll, you know, tie the tire on the waistcoat and we'll hook it on and we'll see how that works and see if we can just pull him in that. letter, set it down, and we left the truck. for sure was from the sign that we had seen that the highway that we wanted that we were trying
trying to get to was closer than the town we had already passed. <laughs> so we decided to walk that way. Walking during the day was fine, but at night it was different. It was always cold and windy. Did a lot of backwards walking. Clayton, the little trooper that he was, was uh, quiet and calm while we were moving, but if we stopped, he would fuss and cry. I would try to feed him, you know. Just, I don't know what he would, if he was getting anything if I was able to produce any milk at that point, but um, I would try. How many days has it been? Since we left the truck? Since we got stuck. Three days in the truck, two days walking, so five days ago. Already. Really? Yeah. Okay. Alright, let's get you back. I'm gonna open that was an old wives' tale, but we discussed the fact that if you fall asleep when you're freezing cold, you won't wake up. More than once, we'd thought about, well, maybe we do just fall asleep, you know, and then, then you know, then this would be over and we wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. But then the thought crossed our mind, well, okay, what if we fall asleep and what if Clayton doesn't? That realization made us change our mind back again to, well, no, 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 let's, we have to keep going. We walked through the night, you know, some come up and still walking, walking, walking. We came to a, a spot where there was a, kind of a really big incline. And the whole time I'm thinking that once we get to the top of this hill, we're gonna see something, a road, we're gonna see power lines or buildings or something. to the top, there was nothing. <laughs> it was, to say the least, a pretty big disappointment. There was no highway. I don't know what we were looking at on the map. I don't know if we went a wrong direction. I don't know what happened, but there was no highway. And I know we could see miles and miles. Jim. <laughs> We're okay. 
We're still okay. We're gonna die out here. Yeah. <laughs> we just need a new plan. He's not crying. Having stopped at the top of this hill, we realized that Clay wasn't crying. <clears throat> he always cried when he stopped. He didn't make a sound, you know. We, uh... <laughs> I didn't want to unzip the bag. He's not crying. Jim, he's not crying. Over the bag. Over the bag. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. If he wasn't alive when we unzipped that bag, I would have laid down right there next to him and died with him. I, there's, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had any reason to go on. <laughs> he was fine. <laughs> Just looking up at us with his blue eyes. Like he knew that we had this hard moment, that our, our plan had failed. It's like we thought that he must have realized that, that we didn't need him crying at the same time. So he was just being polite. On ABC. Jennifer couldn't even stand. So we decided, well, let's just, let, let's find a place out of the elements that we can maybe warm up, we can continue on a little bit later. And I found a little cave, if it was a hole in the rock. So I took Clayton and kind of helped Jennifer down there. Helped her in to this little cave, handed her clay. And once she was in there and settled, this is when I decided to drop the bomb on her. at that moment I thought well if he doesn't come back I'm we're gonna die <laughs> you know please I'm just tired I just need one more day my body's tired it just needs to warm up and then I'll be fine I'll go faster okay I'll hey, go faster three days okay just give me three days what do I do wait and then you take care of this little guy okay and you stay calm and you keep telling yourself three days, over and over and over. I promise you. I love you so much. I love you too. You can do this, okay? Three days. I just didn't think that we should separate. I didn't.
became a, a single-minded machine at that point. Jennifer had it much more difficult. What could be worse than just sitting, waiting? I was all alone <laughs> with Clay that came, and it was scary. And I just sat there and cried a lot. And um, just tried to comfort Clay and just keep him warm. I'm right here. Mommy's right here, okay? I was able to make a much better time by myself and reached to the truck by that evening. The truck did not start. They wasn't too surprised by this, but I was at least out of the elements and allowed myself a couple hours to just kind of rest my legs just a little bit and then set out again. I didn't know what frostbite looked like, so I didn't really know. But all I knew was I just kept putting it back in the snow to know him back up again. So the pain wasn't so bad. Clay had like this empty look in his eyes. Like he just wasn't there. He just laid there with this long, empty look in his face, and I thought he was dying. And all I knew is that there was one more day that Jim said he would be back. three days, I'd be back. And then I see this sign that had caused us to stop several days ago. Now reading on the other side of the sign, I could see that the nearest location that it mentioned was Cedarville, 50 miles. And now I'm starting to rethink, oh boy. <laughs> did I did I underestimate this? Did I lowball this? Should I sit four days? That's what my goal was now to walk 50 miles. I occupied my mind by memorizing everything that I saw and I continued to eat snow and ice. Ice was a prize. Snow was everywhere, but it was very dry. Not too much water in it. Three days, you can make it. Three days. Come on, Jim, you can do it. You can make it, I know you can. At some point when walking, I heard Jennifer talking to me, and this startled me. 
I knew, I knew she wasn't right behind me, but it sounded like she was right behind me. I think somewhere deep down, I, I had a thought that this meant that they had succumbed to the cold and, and they had died. You can only go so long without water and so long without food. I knew I had, I had to hurry. Don't worry, Daddy, stop. We can make it one more day, little Clay. something. Is that a building? Is that, is that a structure? What, what is that thing? Hey! 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 Oh, please. Oh, you gotta help me, me and my wife. Oh, we've been stuck. And my baby, we've had no food. All right, all right. Get up in here, out of the cold. It's going to be all right. Dave Peterson, he and his wife, Ruth Ann, are via Nevada. This is via Nevada, population two. These two live in this house, which is the town. He had been home for lunch and was just heading out of town, going back to work. Um, so he drove me up to his house and helped me in. Out past Hell's Creek, right? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. I know it. Better head out soon, though, or we ain't gonna beat the snow. All right, I'll get my stuff together. Okay, I'm on my way. All right, I'll see you soon. We're gonna go get him. Yeah, good. No, oh, you stay there. You're in no shape. Look at your feet. Your family's going to need you. And you're going to need to get to a hospital. I was upset with them that they wouldn't let me go with them. They said, you know, we got this. We'll, we'll get there just fine. You've done your part. This is where I realized how bad frostbite can look about half of my foot was as dark a purple as you can get without it being black. Reluctantly, I acquiesced and let them take me to a, the medical facility. They said that when my feet started to thaw, it was going to be a pain like I did not want to experience. For the past five days, Muriel and Kevin Mulligan have been frantic over the disappearance of Muriel's son, 21-year-old James Stopa, his wife, 20-year-old Jennifer, and a couple of five-month-old sons. Hello. They found Jim. Is he okay? Is Jim okay? Is he hurt? We finally got that phone call. They found Jim. And it was like, but everyone in our house was just jumping up and down and screaming. Have they found Jennifer and Clayton? Every time I fall asleep, I dream of, like, a rescue. I mean, every single time if I fall asleep. came and I think by that point I was starting to tell myself that this could be it. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I am so sorry. And who knows 
when anybody would find us. And all I just kept thinking about was my family and what they must be thinking and um, the not knowing and not knowing and not being able to tell them I loved them. <laughs> just all the stupid mistakes we made that got us into that stupid situation. <laughs> and I think it was um, just about dark and I had dozed off again. I was dreaming of a rescue. transferred from the truck into a snow cat. The snow cat actually had some EMT, like some medical personnel in there. Then they took Clay from me. They wanted to see what his feet looked like to see if he, you know, had frostbite or anything like that. And I I just remember as they were cutting through layer after layer after layer to get to his toes, everybody in there like sort of held their breath. Please let him be like, okay. When he got through, he, I just, they all were like, yay, because he like little pink toes were, you know, wiggling. They came and picked me up. I was just a nervous wreck. They didn't know where Jennifer was at that point, and Clayton, because we hadn't gotten any information on them yet. It was a four-person plane. Before we landed, though, um, the pilots turned to us and said, they found... <laughs> They found Jennifer and Clayton, and they're alive. They put me in an ambulance, and then from the ambulance, then into the hospital. And then that's when I saw Jim for the first time. I, I said, you, you did it. You kept your promise. You came back. I'm Clayton Stolpa, and I'm the son of Jim and Jennifer Stolpa. I think they've gone as far as saying that I'm the reason that they survived. I thought that was amazing. My parents are my heroes. Clay's younger sister, Shelby, was born in 1995. Clay was the reason that we survived as a family, so she's always been kind of the, the reward over time, though, Jennifer and I grew apart, um, remained friends. She's happy in her life, and I'm happy in mine. I have to admit that I, I wouldn't want to change anything because it would change who I am today. As young as we were <laughs> when we got into all that and went, in, went through everything, I feel like we, it kind of made us grow up a little bit, too. He's always my hero. <laughs> 